a little bit of stuff, but we are so excited that you hear that you are here. Um, our first announcement, one that we are really excited about, is our goal is at the end of the month to start small groups here at Story Church. So what those are, yeah, woohoo, we're super excited. So what those are, if you're not really sure, but they're just an opportunity for us to get together on another time other than Sunday in a smaller setting, um, either in somebody's home or a coffee shop. We're open to wherever, um, but whether it be um, there's two kinds. We can either do um, you could do a Bible study or a certain curriculum that you would like to do, or it could be based around interest. If somebody wanted to start a kayaking group or a coffee group where you tried a different coffee shop just for fellowship, it's just to grow community in Story Church. And so what we're looking for right now and why we're announcing it right now is because we want to know who is interested in leading a small group. So what that means is you would do... Um, training with Pastor Spencer and I, and we would go through kind of what it looks like, um, but you as a leader would be able to decide when it happens during the week, if it's every other week, if it's every week, and this is not an eternal thing. <laughs> Small groups, we're going to run them through a semester, so if you agree to lead one, you don't have to worry like, oh my gosh, when is this ever going to end? We will, um, we will end them at the end of spring um, so that you have time to get through your Bible study or whatever whatever it is that you would want to do. Um, so we have a sign up online. So if you go to the website, there's a tab at the top of the website called community. And when you click that, there is a button that you'll hit that says small group leader sign up. This is not to just be in a small group. At the end of the month, we'll do sign ups for those and we'll tell you the available small groups and who's leading them. But for right now, we want to have um, just a, a good consensus of who's interested in leading one. Like I said, we're not going to throw you out in the water alone. We're going to be there with you, um, helping you through uh, what it's like to lead one if you've never um, led one. Who in here has been in a small group before? Of course, not in Story Church, but okay, awesome, awesome. So they're just a wonderful opportunity. Um, as long as it is 100% trusted space, and that is the most important thing, and that is something you will hear us push over and over again, is these small groups have to be a trusted space where people can share life, right? because we all need to be able to do that. We all need to be able to do that. Okay, so um, that's going to be the first announcement. So if you're interested in leading one, sign up on the website under the community tab. And then after that, um, it's just your connection card. If you're here with us, it's your first time, or if you need to give us some information, we'd love for you to fill out a connection card. It just helps us send you something in the mail to say that we are so thankful that you are here and that you joined us. We hope your holiday was um, absolutely uh, awesome and that you had a great time with your family. We got to take a week off from setting up and tearing down so that that was awesome, but we are so thankful that you are here this morning. So I'm going to pass this off. All right, there it is. <laughs> we found it. Now I can talk to you guys. Yay. Some of y'all were like, you don't need a mic. <laughs> we're happy today. We're good. You're not going to shout at me, but you're wrong. I'm going to shout at you today. <laughs> So what we're doing today, we are kicking off a brand new series. Everybody say brand new. And it's called Dream Big. How many of you guys saw the pictures or stuff on social media about this new series and what's coming up? Awesome, awesome. So this is part one. We're going to jump in to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3. If you have your Bible with you, that's where we're going to start. But I'm not starting there right away, so you have a little bit of time to find it. If you're not a scholar like Pastor Dave, you'll have some time to find it. Um, I'm so glad. How many of you are first-time guests in here today? Y'all go ahead and clap for them. That's exciting. We're, we're super happy that they're here with us this morning. And we are just rolling. How many of you guys have noticed some differences today? Differences? Yeah? That's all right. Everybody say, that's all right. God's got us. I just wanted to read this to you. I was meditating on my way over here this morning. How many of you guys know the song, Come Again? It's by Elevation. It's Elevation of Maverick City. It's a newer song. It's not super new. But just listen to these lyrics real quick before I jump into the word today. It says, it's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart, this empty space, this empty space is what you wanted all along. I don't know about you, but the Holy Spirit's going to show up today. It's not a building. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted 
all along. How many of you guys have empty space in your life that needs to be filled by the Holy Spirit? I think that's every single one of us in here today, and that should be the cry of all of our hearts. No matter how good we get at doing something, we should always ask God to fill that empty space. And every day, we should literally have empty space to give back to God, right? Like, we should say, hey, God, whatever you want to take, whatever is in my hand, whatever is in my life, whatever I think I'm good at, God, make me better. Do more. Turn it upside down. Flip it on its head. Make it not what we thought it was going to be so you get glory, God. Not so we get glory in and of ourselves. That's, that's bonus material for you today. That's extra so you're lucky you got some extra bonus material from this message. Um, but Dream Big, part one, we are going to be in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 3. And how many of you guys realize it's the new year today? I, I, we're actually a few days in at this point. Um, but we hope that everyone had an amazing Christmas, an amazing new year. Who did something fun in here over New Year's? Cool, cool. I, I heard some people in here today actually did something new for the first time. And that's a cool thing about New Year's is it's a time to try some things that maybe you never tried before or finish some things that you didn't finish before, right? So there's, there's some of that going on. How many of you in here set New Year's resolutions for your life? Maybe you didn't do it this year, but maybe you've done it in the past. How many in here? Okay, we got some honest people. For yourself or for your family, some examples that I've had, lose weight. In the past, I've had get a new job, try something new, right? Um, go on multiple vacations. That's, that's always a goal of mine every year. Um, make X amount of dollars, right? Like that's up here. Like I know for my family to go on vacation, I need another $3,000 or whatever it is to, to see that come to pass. Um, there's nothing wrong with making New Year's resolutions. Nothing wrong with it in and of itself. But most of those fail within the first three days. I want to tell you that. So if you haven't already quit your New Year's resolution for this year, just wait till tomorrow. You'll probably be done with it. <laughs> you online, that's true for you too. You're not escaping today. And the vast majority remaining end within a week. A week's time. Seven days is about how long most of us make it if we make it that far. So it's more about our priorities and our structure and our life and what we do every day, the habits we create, as opposed to a resolution we think we're going to magically get to do because it's a new year. This year, we wanted to kick off 2022 talking about how to dream and not just how to dream, but dream God-sized dreams. To me, those are, that's everything, right? Like if I can dream and I can do it in my own strength, is that really a God-sized dream? Is that really a big dream? I don't think so. If I can't do it in my own strength, that probably is where I need God to step in and make a difference in my life and meet me for the rest of it. Like, yeah, he got me to where I am already, but I, God, I really need you or there's no way this thing can happen. That's what a God-sized dream is. How many people in here really dream based on that definition? Do you have a God-sized dream? Like, could you turn to the person to the left and to the right of you right now and tell them your God-sized dream? Could you do it right now? Well, quit saying yes and do it. <laughs> so go ahead. If you got a dream, if you're a dreamer, go ahead and tell them what the dream is. Maybe they already know. Maybe they're family and they already know all your dreams and that's okay. If you're online, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Um, big dreams are only those where God is going to step in. And so I today have a little, I don't really have a whole lot of space up here. Can somebody come hold this for me? That'd be awesome. And help me out. So this is going to be my vision board. Thank you, Vanna White. Thank you. Appreciate you today. Um, so this is my vision board, and I have some things on here for this year that we're going to attach to this vision board, and I'll put it up here when we're done. But I think the Bible should stay up here instead of the vision board. You know, it's kind of hard. Like, what do I remove? What do I not remove? And so for me, the first one I have is to be healthy and happy and have a God-centered family. And I think all of that requires God. Like, I don't know about you. But I have this wonderful family already that God has given me. And let's see if we can get this on here with one hand. Okay. And I want, I want my family to, to also live that way, to, to see it in me and want to go after that, to live a healthy, happy, God-centered family. I chose this picture because, I mean, look at that face. Who wouldn't, right? So that, that's 
my first one. My next one is to be generous. And so for me, what that looks like is obviously giving through the church and giving to what God's heart is. Um, and for me, you see up there a golf cart. Many of you don't know, but this year, Story Church, and I'm speaking this loudly and boldly, that we will be participating in either A, buying the whole thing, or B, giving a part of what comes in through our finances to a golf cart for this school. I've said it on camera now, so it's definitely going to happen, and I'm speaking it out. And to me, that's a God-sized dream, not only for me, but for Story Church. And so that's going to be at the front of my face every day because we don't just do this for us. We do this for our world, for our community, and what they need. And this school has told me they need another golf cart to get around this campus so that they can get to students safely and to clean things as they needed to be cleaned and take things back and forth. It's a large campus. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, <clears throat> and then my third one, this is the fun one, is to go on vacation. And I don't know how many of you know those mountains there and that blue water, but that is Hawaii, and that is a God-sized dream of mine. Whether that happens this year or in the future, we want that to happen. And so th this is kind of what a small vision board looks like. So Sarah and I were like, what do we need in our lives? What do we want to do in our lives? And we thought about it in all these different areas, and this is where God stepped in and we said, hey, God, what are some things we cannot do without you? And I want you to do the same thing today. I want you to find what your dream is, what your vision is for 2022, maybe 2023. Maybe it takes a lot of money to get to Hawaii. But yeah, we do have a friend who lives there. So if you're watching Mitchell, by the way, I'm calling you out. We need some room and board. Um, we're going to go there, and we're going we're gonna to have fun together. How many of you guys know that God is a God of fun, right? Like, we want to have fun in the kingdom of God. Yes, ma'am. You'll babysit? Okay, okay. Awesome, awesome. So there was some babysitters that want to help out in the room. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, let's jump into the Word of God today. If you're okay with that, let's go ahead and open our Bibles. If you have your Bible with you, if you have it online, that's great. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. It says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the Word of the Lord was rare. How many of you guys know right now the Word of the Lord is rare? There's so many good nuggets in Scripture. Like, I could literally just preach from that alone. But let's keep going. There were not many visions. How many of you know, without vision, people perish? And that's what we're seeing here. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. This is a big game of peekaboo, by the way, just so you know. Peekaboo, my son loves that game. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Key point there, guys. Samuel didn't know the Lord, so he didn't know his voice. Okay, we're talking about dreaming. It's hard to dream God-sized dreams if you don't know God's voice. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed. A third time, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went, down, went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, I ask you today to come in our midst, God, to give us God-sized dreams, to make us be dreamers. God, to allow us to have vision for our family and vision for this church and vision for your county and your state and your world. God, I ask that you would just show up today and give us new vision and fresh eyes and fresh words that are going to bless people in a new way. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? All right. So my first point for today on how to dream big dreams is cancel confusion. It may seem simple, 
but it's clear in Scripture. Verses 4 and 5 say, Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. This happens several times. There's confusion. Why is there confusion? Let me answer that first. Because he didn't have a relationship with God. He didn't know the Lord is what it says. So if you have confusion, that's step one, know the Lord. (laughs) If you're trying to dream dreams and you keep getting woken up in the night and you don't know and you don't have clarity... Know God. Find God. Find him in your everyday life. Come to know him. And guess what? At the end of this message, you're going to have a chance to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Samuel is confused by who is calling him. Let's look in the New Testament about what it says. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. When we worship the right way, God doesn't stir us up into confusion. He brings us into harmony. This goes for all the churches, no exceptions. I know in context it's slightly different, right? It's not, it's not a dream, it's not a vision, but what we're talking about here is the same thing, that confusion, where there's confusion and there's disunity and there's things that are in chaos, it's hard to hear from God. It's hard to know his plan for your life. And so as the church is in chaos, the church can't know the plan of God. Even though it's written right in front of them, the church struggles because there's chaos within the church. Same thing in your family when you're dreaming dreams. Same thing in your life when you're asking God to give you a vision or a word or something new in your life. Many of the times we don't know the Lord because we actually don't read his word, and that's step one. The second thing you need to do on how to dream big dreams is get some real rest. How many of you could have used some real rest in 2021? 2021, like, punched you in the face, punched you in the gut, punched you in the back of the head, like, all kinds of different places it got you. And many times we didn't even see it coming, right? Many of us in here today are walking through something right now that came from 2021 into 2022 with you. And now we're trying to just get away from it and hide But I want to tell you that God has a way for you to get real rest in the midst of all this chaos. Verse 3, it says, The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord. And again, at the end, he's actually lying down when he hears from God where the ark of God was. Why was he lying down where where the ark of God was? Because his presence was there. Because he knew something was calling him. He didn't know what it was, but he knew that something was drawing him in and that he needed to be near it. And so he was trying, he was trying, he was trying, and eventually he does get to know the Lord. So he, he was spoken to every single time while he was laying down, while he was resting, while his mind and his body were at ease. How many of you, your mind and your body isn't at ease this morning? I can say that's that right here, that's me. I can tell you that God wants us to start getting real rest in our lives because he can speak to us so much louder when we're quiet. Real rest isn't even necessarily sleeping, Right? Can, can you agree with that? Like sometimes you're just still and you, you listen to God's voice and you hear him in ways and maybe it's out fishing and maybe it's out climbing a mountain and maybe it's skydiving and wherever it is that you can hear God with nothing attached, you need to get there and get some real rest with him. I hope you hear that word for 2022 because that is huge in your life. Mark 631 says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. To a quiet place. There's so much shouting at us. There's so much loud noise. There's so many things wanting our attention internally, externally, physically, emotionally. It's all wanting our attention, but God wants it the most. So get away with him and get some rest. Hopefully, Story Church is a little bit of that reprieve in your week, and you can get some rest here, and you can come here, and you can feel like people will pray for you, and they care about you, and they love you, and this is a place where God is going to show up. That's God right there. Thank you. Rest leads to knowledge, completion, and the ability to dream. You see the rest of this scripture is like the five loaves and two fish story. If you read the rest of Mark 6, right? Like that's what's happening. And what happens? All the disciples are so tired and so worried and so stressed. But God says, come here. Come with me. Show me what you do have. I will make a miracle out of it. And then we all can rest and we all can feast and we all can be in the glory of God and in his presence to abundance right? And so that's where this scripture starts, but where it ends is in abundance. And I think when we rest, we have to, we have to rest from a place of knowing that God is going to take us to abundance. We don't have to strive to get there. 
So the third point of how to dream big dreams today is active accountability. This is a tough one. <laughs> how many of you know that being accountable to anyone in your life is hard, much less with the hard things, right? I look around this room and God, I'm blessed. Like I see so many of my friends and my family and people who have held me accountable in my life. And without them, I know I would have never heard the voice of God fully for my life, for my circumstance, for my situation. And I hope you, you in this room and you watching online, you have someone in your life that can hold you accountable in an active way. Accountability without responsibility is nothing. If you don't have someone holding you responsible and someone pushing you to go forward and to go further, it's not accountability. It's just someone I can cry to when I need someone to cry to. It's someone I can gossip to when I need someone to gossip to. It's, it's not someone who's actually going to say, hey, be quiet, calm down, what's the situation, what's going on, what do you really need to do, move towards that. Or hey, maybe even sometimes they look you in the face and they tell you you're dumb and you're doing it wrong. I know that's not a church word, but I'm telling you the truth. Like some of you need to be looked in the face at different times and be told you're doing it wrong. Quit doing the same thing over and over again. What's that? That's the purest form of insanity. So change it up. Do something different. Verses 8 and 9, it says, a third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. I love this scripture because every time, even though he didn't know the Lord, he knew who he could go to, who did know the Lord, right? Y'all, come on. He, He knew who he needed to go to. He knew where God was. He knew where there was peace. He knew where there was joy. He knew where there was hope and wisdom and all of these things that God had. And so he kept going to the same place. He says, here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Sometimes your accountability partners aren't perfect. I want to tell you that too. Sometimes it takes time for them to realize what you're going through, and that's okay too because we're all human. But it's better to have them and keep them and eventually get to the right place than to be like, man, they have no idea who's talking to me and what's going on in my life, so I need somebody new. Because guess what? There's never any transparency or truth in your life if you don't find accountability and community through someone in something. And ideally, that's the church. That's the body of God, a body of Christ, as he's laid out in scripture, that you would find a community of believers that you can get wrapped up in and know the truth. Because the Bible says what? The truth will set you free. And I think we all need freedom. And James actually also says, too, in the book of James, it says, confess your what to one another? Your sin, so that you may be healed. Who wants to be healed in here today? I think all of us do. And so, so many times, sin has got such a bad stigma on it that the church even has said, run from it, hide it, and put it under a rug. Because if you have it, you're not welcome. And that's not what the Bible says. It actually says, confess it one to another so that there's healing so that you may be healed. And a good, the good news is, is Jesus took it all 2,000 years ago on the cross, and he's not bringing it up in your life. He's not holding it over your head. So you don't have to hold it over your head. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I love that phrase, too, because how many of us will say, speak, Lord? Just till you get something. Maybe you get nothing. Maybe you start to say, speak, Lord. He doesn't speak fast enough. So you turn up Spotify or you turn up ESPN or you turn up some other thing in your life. Maybe you turn on your video game system, whatever it is that you go to, because God isn't speaking and you need fulfillment right now. So when you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, are you actually listening? Because active listening is waiting, waiting on him, wait on God. Your timing is not his. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. He went to someone he trusted and listened to what they had to say. He went to someone he trusted and he listened to what they had to say. Man, God is, God is so, so good. Um, we want to acknowledge today also that dreaming can be hard. Like these three simple steps aren't that simple, right? These, these are really, really hard things to do. And it, you know, most people share their dreams with the wrong people. How many of you have done that before? You've shared your dreams with the wrong people? And you know, as soon as you did that, it's like the Bible says, casting your pearls before swine. 
right? Like they, they really want to know what you want to do because sometimes they want to beat you to it. <laughs> sometimes they want to put you on blast because you didn't get there when you said you were going to get there. And when you said you were going to do it, so now you're a liar, or now you're this, or now you're that. Guess what? God doesn't do that to you, and people who are men and women of God do not do that in your life either. They hold you up. They lift you up. No matter how many times you fail, no matter how many times you fall down, no matter how many times you mess up, they say there's hope, there's strength, there's all of the things that God has given us to work through these things. Some other things I want to acknowledge about dreaming being hard is that too many things speak into you your God-given dream. Too many things speak into your God-given dream. So that could be chatter from out here. That could be the news. That could be your newspaper. That could be your phone. How many of you, your phone goes off constantly? One person. We got two Christians in here. Okay. We got two. We got three. Awesome. It's like a Price is Right game in here. Maybe I should try that at at the end. Okay. So all of us are letting different things speak into our God-given dream. What is at the forefront of your mind? What is at the forefront of your dream? Maybe you say today, these aren't, Pastor, these aren't holy enough dreams for you. You need, you need to have some holier things in your life. You need, to, you need to get right. Like you need to have on there, read the Bible 365 days times two on your Bible plan and on your daily log here. But I want to tell you that whatever God has spoken to your heart for your family and your season is the right dream that he's given you. No one else can speak into your dream. No one else that is tearing you down and tearing your dream down. And I can tell you, if it's negative all the time, if someone is negative all the time, that's the person you need to do the, do the other negative to. You know, some math, I'm going to help my dad out here. Negative and negative is what's positive. So let's get the two negatives out of here and get positive, right? Like, let's, let's get some help in our lives with people who want to help us get in the right direction and down the right path and in the right place. Man, God wants you to see your God-given dreams come to pass. And the, the last thing I want to tell you on here about acknowledging that dreams can be hard is that I want to tell you today, don't stop dreaming. Can I sit with you for a minute? Is it cool if I, if I sit on this? Uh, well, the camera might not like it, so I'll stand like this and, and lean over. But I want everyone online to hear us too, okay? Good morning, good evening, whenever it is you're watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I just want to be real from a, a pastor's heart today. Many of you know that there are, um, this is not, this is bonus material too. So if you're taking notes, you can. It's not in the message today. But many of you know there's, there's differences in here and there's things that have changed and there's going to be ups and downs throughout, throughout the church. And I just want to encourage you that God is in every single moment of your life. He's in every single moment of this church He's in every single moment of your kids' lives, of your family, of your friends. God wants you to know that when there's tough times, that we can lean on him. Because I do want to say this, I'm not a big, big, like, let's talk about Satan kind of pastor, but I do want to tell you that Satan does not like new churches, especially new churches that are saving people. In 2021, we had 10 salvations in this church. Satan does not like that. Point blank, period, because we're robbing hell and populating heaven. That's what this church has been sent here to do in Claremont for a season, for such a time as this. That is on my dream board, too. You don't get to see all of my dreams, but I believe that for for this season, I believe that God is going to multiply and double and bring in people that need to hear this message from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Wherever they're at, wherever they're coming from, I'm going to prophesy right now that we're going to have stage full of musicians and people who are just on their face before the Lord, worshiping God, whether we have sound or we don't, whether we bring the word or we don't, whether we eat donuts or we don't, whether we're just in here together uh, prophesying to our neighbors and to our friends and to our family, speaking and bringing them up. Because I know sometimes we just got to pause and say, God, what do you want? God, what do you want? Not what do I have planned, not what's in here, not what's going to be on the screen, none of those things. Literally, I believe so strongly that the move of God that has moved in my life, if you can just simply plug in to his word and to what his his word says, that our highest calling is in relationship. Our highest calling. It's none of the other things, but if we can get into relationship and into people's lives, guess what? It allows us to do all these things we've talked about today. 
It allows us to have accountability. It allows us to cancel confusion and dream big. It allows us to do all of those things. And I just want you to know today that that's my heart. And so if you're wondering what the heart is of Story Church, that's your pastor's heart, that we would get into community, that we would get into a situation where we truly know one another and that lives are truly changed. And that's not necessarily shown by how many people are in the seats. I've seen a lot of churches grow really big in numbers, but not grow big people. In order to grow in numbers healthily, you have to grow big people. And so that's our prayer. I know that's Pastor Sarah's too, that we would grow big people in this church and big families and big community that can reach the world. So today I want to pray about this, this vision, what the church is doing, what's going on. And I, I believe strongly that today we have an opportunity to lean in, even in the silence. Like we talked about getting away and getting silent with God, right? Like lay down and get some rest, real rest. So I'm going to pray, and as everyone in here is praying, I would love for you if, you, if you feel led to speak in tongues, or you pray in the Spirit, or you pray inwardly, or you pray outwardly, however it is that you pray, God is not judging you based on your prayers, but today let's just pray. Let's lift up this school, let's lift up this community, let's lift up this church. This is not a me pray time, this is a you pray time, so let's try that right now. Let's go ahead and start praying out. Whatever you feel God leading you to pray about dreaming big, about 2022, about this year, about what God has in store for us, let's just go ahead and pray. Let's keep that, that momentum going that God is in our midst. Let's ask him to speak through us. Today, God, as I pray, I pray that everyone else in this place would grow in relationship with you. Just pray over me. Pray louder than me. I don't care what it is. Just go ahead and talk out. Today, I pray that we would create a lasting vision, one that comes from, from nothing to something, God, that you're in the business of making miracles happen in this place today, God. God, I pray today that we would be able to write out our vision and make it plain, that it would stand the, the test of time, God, that that would happen in people's lives and in their families, God, today. God, we just ask that you would hear our hearts cry, whether this is weird or not. God, I just ask today that we would pray like, like people who are seeking after every ounce of your being. God, I pray today that as we pour ourselves out, that we would pour it out, that we would waste everything on you, God. God, there's nothing wrong with wasting everything on you. As a matter of fact, it's the best thing we can do. Jesus even says that in your word. God, today I just ask that you would go to work, that you would trust God in all the areas of our lives, that we would be able to do that in every single capacity. God, that we would go to work with what we know how to do, but we would trust you with the rest. God, I thank you for that today. God, we just, we just acknowledge you today and we speak out your truth. We say you are whole, you are health, you are life, you are joy, you are peace, you are strength. God, you are Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu. God, I speak all of that over my life today, over this church, God. I believe it, Jehovah Rapha. God, I, I just ask today that you would come and be all of what you are in this place. And we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Amen.